Hey guys, if you want to motivate yourself to crush it in life and support this kind of content at the same time, check out AnimeOutPro.com where you can get your very own Asta Dream Big Work Hard shirt. Link in the description. What up guys, Gozen here for Anime Uproar and today I'm going to be ranking the OP Magic Knight Captains from weakest to strongest. A lot of you let me know that you'd like to see this video on my all 9 Magic Knight Captains and their powers explained video, so here it is. If you want to see more Black Clover videos, smash that like button to let me know and let me know in the comments what video you would like to see next. If you haven't joined the Black Bulls of YouTube by subscribing and ringing that magic YouTube bell. And then Finral will be sure to teleport future Black Clover content straight to you. If you want even more Black Clover content and want to share your thoughts with us about the Black Clover anime or manga, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Warning, there will be manga spoilers in this video because there's no way I could actually explain my reasoning without using all the info available. Keep in mind, this list uses evidence from the series, but we have not necessarily seen what every Magic Knight captain is capable of, and some have had more opportunities to show off their skills than others. So at the end of the day, this is more so my opinion rather than objective indisputable fact. If you would rank the captains differently yourself, you can let me know how exactly you'd rank them in the comments. Now without further ado, let's jump into the ranking. The weakest Magic Knight captain is Gelder Poiseau. He used to be the captain of the Purple Orcas before it was discovered that he betrayed the kingdom. He uses transparency magic, alternatively translated as permeation magic. It can make him invisible and impervious to magic attacks for a limited time. His magic can also not be sensed during this period of time, although those who know how to read key can still figure out where he is. When he used the power to try and escape from the other Magic Knight captains, Charlotte even said that for a short amount of time, he's invincible. However, this isn't really the case because he can still be hit by physical attacks and if someone can read key, they can take him out relatively easily as Asta did. Gelder's power allowed him to use dirty tricks to gain wealth and improve his rank. If it wasn't for his shady behind the scenes dealings, he probably would not have been able to even acquire the title of Magic Knight Captain. So it makes sense that he is on the bottom of this list. I'm not trying to sell his powers short. They're actually pretty awesome considering that no one other than Yami and Asta for the time being, can read key. Gelder can also create invisible soldiers to attack others and has a spell called Invisible Traveling Companion, which he can use to make another person invisible and intangible to magic as well. So the power can be very useful and is not bad by any means. But as I said before, this is a list of OP mages, the best of the best. So Gelder ended up this low because the others are even stronger. Next up, we have Rel, the captain of the Oz Azur Deer Squad and the youngest Magic Knight Captain in history. He is only 19 years old. Now this was actually a difficult decision for me because Rill has one of if not the most OP magic which is picture magic alternatively translated as painting magic. It allows him to create anything he paints and according to Walter Rill's imagination and creativity are infinite which would mean theoretically his power is as well. Unlike most other mages he is not limited by a magic type since his magic can generate any element. Considering his magic and age, I think he has the potential to eventually become one of the strongest people on this list. But I finally decided to place him here for a few reasons. Mainly, it is because he lacks the experience that the other captains have. This inexperience is reflected in the fact that his team, the Azur Deer Squad, ranked at the bottom of the latest Star Awards festival. Furthermore, despite being a Magic Knight captain, he managed to lose the final round of the Crystal Destruction Battle Tournament. Now yes, you know is extremely strong and yes Rill only lost because of how powerful his own magic was but the fact remains that he lost. Rill accidentally destroying his own crystal with his own magic shows his inexperience when compared to the other magic knight captains since he lost track of what was going on in the heat of battle. A more experienced magic knight captain could no doubt take advantage of that kind of weakness in a fight. Another factor that shaped my decision is the fact that Rill has weaker statistics than most magic knight captains 
Legends, according to the official data book. While he got a 5 out of 5 in Magic Amount, Magic Control, and Creativity, his customized category, he had subpar scores in Physical Strength, a 2 out of 5, and Cleverness, a 3 out of 5. Physical Strength and Cleverness can end up being very important in combat, which is partly why I placed them where I did on this list. Rill definitely has a lot of room for improvement, but for the time being, I couldn't place him any higher. Next up, we have Charlotte Rosalade, the captain of the Blue Rose squad with her Briar Magic. She usually has a handle of a sword and briars come rushing out of it, and she can manipulate them at will, although she does not actually need the sword handle to fight with her powers. So what do we know about how strong Charlotte is? We know she fought Raya and was unable to overpower him before the fight was interrupted, although she was not defeated either. Later, when her body gets taken over by the elf Charla, Charla enhances Charlotte's powers. Nevertheless, Charla is unable to defeat Ayami that is trying to capture her without hurting Charlotte's body. Charla has to retreat, although it seems clear that Yami could have won if he did not have to worry about holding back for Charlotte's sake. As a noblewoman, Charlotte possesses a vast amount of magic, although as seen with the fight against Yami, slashes can potentially bisect her magic's power and cancel out her attacks, even if her magic is overwhelmingly greater than her opponent's. If we don't count the customized category that's different for everyone, Charlotte's stats are more impressive than Rill's. While she also got a perfect 5 out of 5 in magic amount and control, she scored a solid 4 out of 5 in physical strength and cleverness. She's a strong captain, but at the same time, there are definitely stronger ones. Following Charlotte, we have Jack the Ripper, the captain of the Green Mantis squad. Jack uses severing magic, which allows him to create mana blades which tend to sprout out of his arms. He can also shoot mana blades at his opponents, sort of like Yami does with his dark magic. Jack can adjust his blades properties to match his enemy's magic, so given enough time, there's nothing he can't cut. So far, we've seen Jack participate in the fight against the three members of the Midnight Sun. He fought against Veto. Jack is very comfortable in his abilities. When he shows up, he is not at all daunted by the members of the Midnight Sun. He actually tells Yami that it's not fair that he was fighting fun opponents alone and even questions whether they are worth slicing up. He has a rivalry going on with Yami which in itself demonstrates how strong he is, and his goal is to beat the Black Bull Captain when he is at 100%. According to Finral, people also refer to Jack as a destruction fiend who wants to slice up the whole world. He not only survived the fight against Yami, he even shaved the whole mountain away in the process. Jack appears to have no trouble fighting against Veto, and even has time to worry about Nozel, who gets matched up with Fauna, who has Nozel's elemental weakness, and the fire spirit Salamander to boot. He asks Nozel if he wants to switch because of the fact that fire is super effective against his mercury magic. Later on, Jack fights alongside Yami against Finral's immensely talented and elf-possessed brother. At this point, we discover that Jack can even cut through spatial magic, like Yami's Dimension Slash. In regards to his statistics, he scored a 4 out of 5 in physical strength, a 4 out of 5 in magic amount, a 5 out of 5 in magic control, a 4 out of 5 in magic sensing, and a 4 out of 5 in cleverness. His statistics are similar to Charlotte's except he got an extra point on magic sensing while she got an extra point on magic amount. However, I place Jack above because of his destructive reputation, his ability to keep up with Yami, and the fact that Jack slashes work very similar to Yami's, and so, just as it was with Yami's slashes, Jack's own slashes would be effective at dealing with Charlotte's Briar magic. Next I have Nozel Silva, the captain of the Silver Eagle squad, who possesses Mercury magic. He can manipulate his Mercury in many ways, allowing him to use it as a defense, as a short, mid, or long range attack, and as a ride. Now, I initially struggled with whether I should put him above Jack because he managed to be brought down by the elf Kivin, but ultimately I decided to put him ahead. In his defense, Kivin was said to be the strongest elf in the area, according to Nozel. And while Jack had another Holy Knight captain, Yami, by his side, Nozel only had Noel, who only later unlocked an amazing power when it was needed and used it to defeat the strong elf who injured Nozel. Aside from that, Nozel was able to fight Fauna, just as Charlotte was able to fight Raya and Jack was able to fight Veto without being overpowered. This is even more impressive for Nozel 
well because he was fighting against his elemental weakness, fire. And not only that, but Fauna possessed the fire spirit Salamander, which drastically increased her already strong fire powers. Nozel's rival is Fugolion, someone who also strives to be the strongest and become the Wizard King. The fact that Nozel can compete with someone else who has his elemental weakness and is as strong as Fugolion also goes to show his strength. While he scored the same as Jack in the other categories, Nozel beat him in magic amount. Because Nozel is a nobleman, he has a large reserve of magic to use. Combine that with the speed of his Mercury magic and his difficult to escape attacks like Silver Rain, and I had to put Nozel above Jack. Jack can eventually cut through anything, but it takes time, while Nozel has many quick ways to take out an opponent. After Nozel, we have William Vongeance, the captain of the Golden Dawn squad. Now, we are really getting into some ridiculously powerful characters. Keep in mind that I am thinking of William independently and not including Potri, since they are different characters even if they share the same body. William's magic is World Tree Magic. We haven't seen him use it a lot, but what he has used has been extremely impressive. The spell Great Mistletine Tree, which creates roots in the ground that absorb surrounding mana, and then a giant tree appears that can capture many enemies at once. Some drawbacks of the spell are that it takes time, and the size of it depends on the mana in the area, so William cannot always create as big of a tree. He can also throw a small seed at an opponent that will quickly grow into a large tree, trapping the opponent inside. The Golden Dawn squad has been called the strongest squad and William Vongeance is their leader, which goes to show how powerful he is. At the beginning of the series, he is also said to be the top candidate to be the next Wizard King. So to truly understand the significance of that statement, let's look at what it means to be the Wizard King. Julius tells Austin, you know, that one becomes the Wizard King through merit. Julius explains that what people want from a Wizard King is achievements that mark you as the strongest. So he tells Austin, you know, and I quote, to devote yourselves to building a reputation, that's everything. End quote. So the fact that William is considered to be the top candidate suggests that so far he has marked himself to be the strongest through his achievements and attained a great reputation. However, the fact that Julius places such an emphasis on building your reputation suggests that it is not necessarily the strongest mage that will become Wizard King, if that mage doesn't care about reputation. So the fact that William is the top candidate definitely means he's strong, but even more so, it means he's been able to build a good reputation for being strong up to this point. However, I do believe that there are stronger mages than him, like the next one I will mention who has no interest in becoming the next Wizard King. That character is none other than the uncrowned, undefeated lioness Mereo Leona. Mereo Leona possesses fire magic, and her fights are some of my favorite moments in the whole series because of how epic and strong she truly is. Mereo Leona doesn't like being in the capital, so she spends 300 days a year away basking in nature's mana, which strengthens her mana skin, making her, to use Zora's words, a monster when it comes to battle. Thus, she is actually more than strong enough to be a magic knight captain, but she wasn't one before because she didn't want to be, and she wouldn't want to be the wizard king either. So even if she is stronger than William, she would not be considered the top candidate. Even if we ignore the fact though that Mereo Leona would in all likelihood have a significant elemental advantage against William's tree magic, her accomplishments in the series so far would definitely suggest that she is stronger than him. For instance, Patri possesses a magic, light magic, which I would not view as being inferior to tree magic. Furthermore, Patri has the same stats that William has, except he beats William in physical strength. He gets a 4 out of 5 rather than a 3 out of 5. Thus, I would assume that Patri is about equal to William in strength, if not stronger. Patri has said that Raya, along with Fauna and Veto, are more powerful than him in combat. And yet, Mereo Leona completely overpowered Raya with his third eye open, which would suggest that he's even stronger at this point than when he fought Charlotte. Not only that, but in what is probably the most epic fight of the series, Mereo Leona was able to fight against five elves, one of them being Raya and another being an elf-possessed Rill, and actually stand her ground until Asta and Zora came back to rescue her. She is truly an epically strong character and deserves to be very high up on this list. Next we have Dorothy Unsworth, the captain of the Coral Peacock squad. It was only recently that we figured out her magic and oh man is it ever OP. I knew Tabata was saving it for a 
reason, and that was definitely the case. Dorothy possesses dream magic. She creates and pulls surrounding people into a dreamlike world, also referred to as a magical dimension, where Dorothy has control and can think anything into existence within that world. On top of that, Dorothy's magic can make those in her world grow sleepier and sleepier, and those that fall asleep will never wake up again. So not only is the power OP to begin with, it can also make the opponent sleepier and sleepier as time goes on. As Sally says, the user of dream magic is invincible in the dreamlike world, so they have to escape that world before they can hope to defeat her. Sally also discovers one drawback of the spell, which is that people can make the user involuntarily think of things and as a result involuntarily bring those things into the dream world. Eventually, the only way that the team can beat the elf that's possessing Dorothy is by having her imagine the real Dorothy. Then the dream world collapses because it cannot support both the elves and Dorothy's dreams at the same time. So in the end, it takes Dorothy to beat her own OP magic. If Dorothy used her magic, since she has more experience with the magic and probably better control over her thoughts through training, chances are she would be much more difficult to defeat than even the elf was. There are only two people that I think are stronger than Dorothy and I'll explain why. One of them is Fugolion Vermilion, the captain of the Crimson Lion squad. He possesses fire magic like his sister, Mereoleona. Before he entered his coma, Mereoleona was likely stronger than him. But we recently got some big news. Fugolion woke up from his coma and somehow managed to inherit a grown salamander, the fire spirit that was previously possessed by Fauna. Salamander at this stage of its growth will dramatically increase Fugolion's power, which was already astonishing. I believe that the fire spirit is enough to put Fugolion above his sister on this list. Furthermore, Fugolion was ranked as the smartest captain. He scored a perfect 5 out of 5 in cleverness, while his sister only scored 4 out of 5. His intelligence would dramatically increase his likelihood of being able to escape from Dorothy's dream world spell. Although he was defeated by Patri in the past, Yami told Patri that he never could have defeated Fugolion if he didn't play dirty. What Patri likely did was pretend to be William Vengeance to get Fugolion to lower his guard before he attacked him. So Yami believed that Fugolion wouldn't have lost to Patri in a fair fight, even though Yami himself could not succeed in defeating Patri in a one-on-one -on -one fight at this point. In fact, he needed help from Ghosh and Asta, and Patri still managed to escape thanks to Raya, Veto, and Fauna. Yami's words go to show how strong Fugolion already was, even before he inherited the OP fire spirit Salamander. Now with Salamander and his intellect, he'll be near invincible, and for those reasons, I had to put Fugolion high up on this list. And lastly, the strongest captain is Yami Sukehiro, the captain of the Black Bulls. Yami possesses dark magic and overcomes the slowness of the dark magic by combining it with his katana. He channels his dark magic into his slashes, so similar to Jack the Ripper, he can send slashes flying at his opponents. Now, why did I place Yami so high? Well, there's quite a few reasons. First off, in terms of physical strength, he comes in first place, not only among the captains, but among all of the characters we've seen so far. However, he also scored a perfect 5 out of 5 in magic amount, so Yami is the best of both worlds. He has also significantly improved since the series began. He actually learned his strongest move since then called Dark Cloak Dimension Slash. The attack allows him to cut through dimensions. Like Jack, he can use this attack to cut through spatial magic, but unlike with Jack, Yami doesn't need the extra time that it takes Jack to adjust to the opponent's magic. He learned this attack after he had that dust up with Jack, and chances are Yami probably always had the upper hand since Jack mentions at one point that he has past grudges against Yami, which could come from the fact that he couldn't ever beat Yami in a fight. After Yami learned his newest strongest move, Jack would stand even less of a chance. Yami's new move would probably allow him to quickly escape from the magic magical dimension that Dorothy can create. Even before he learned Dark Cloak Dimension Slash, he was able to fight against Patri and even survive against the attacks of Fauna, Veto, and Raya, long enough for the other three captains to arrive. He wasn't even worried. He was ready to surpass his limits and even complained that something was about to awaken in him in another second or so. Now this is comedic, but it's not far from the truth. His customized category in the data book was limit surpassing and he scored a perfect 5 out of 5 in that. That ability is what allowed him to unlock Dark Cloak Dimension Slash when he did, and it is something that must be considered when we are talking about how strong he is. I place him on top of this list because he is the strongest captain physically, he has an insane amount of magic, he has the OP move 
move Dark Cloak Dimension Slash, and he is known for his ability to surpass his limits when the situation calls for it. And that is it for today's video, thank you so much for watching, like I said this is my opinion, but I try to inform that opinion with as much evidence as possible. If you think differently that's totally cool, you can let me know how you would rank the captains in the comments. Obviously Kaiser Gran Vorka, the new captain of the Purple Orcas, had to be left out because we know nothing about his magic and we've never seen him fight yet, so speculating as to how he'd match up with the others would have been pretty pointless. I definitely look forward to learning about his powers though. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Black Clover content on this channel, definitely smash that like button to let me know. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and ring that magic YouTube bell so Finral can keep teleporting these videos to you. Let me know what videos you want to see next, but only if you are passionately burning up to see them. Thanks again. I love our own Black Bull squad that we've been able to create and grow here on YouTube, and I feel so lucky that I get to do this every day. Until next time, see ya, Space Cowboy.